Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have something from Gordon McPhail, the third and the last in this series of the Connoisseur Choice Cast Strength exclusively bottled for Kirsch import um, selections. So we have the Bob Blair 23 year old from 1997, we have the Buna Habin uh, 22 years old, and we had the Glen Tauchers, which was sherry cask from 1999, which was only, <coughs> only 21 years old. So, all right, so I'm gonna compare the Buna versus the Glen, the, I'm sorry, the Bob Blair. So before we start, oh, Pour this in here, um, 1997 um, vintage, so 2021 bottled, um, refill X bourbon barrel, 208 bottles, absolutely good, 56.2%, um, also not a bad thing. Comparing it here to the um, Buna Habin, 22 year old from 1998 with 52.9%, 179 euros, 219 euros. Ouch. So both of these are somewhat expensive in my opinion. Oh, I'm wrong. Um, this was not 179. This was um, <laughs> 195. 195 versus two, um, 219 over here. Good. Now I'm going to pull up my nice little book here. Um, this time the 2021 because I have not had very many Bob Blairs in front of the camera. Bob Blair used to be um, an age statement, then they switched over to the vintages. Many people like that. I think Phil and Deepa have the 1999 on the um, shelf. I thought it was very weird to buy a bottle with a big 02 on the front um, from 2002 with a vintage, and they switched back to, to the um, age stated whiskeys. Many people did not like that because the prices went up and they lost the vintages. So this belongs to Inverhaus Distillers. I'm going to tell a little bit about how they made that, um, how they got the whiskey or the distillery. Um, first of all, it was founded in 1790 by James McCaddy. So now some people actually say, whoops, it could be actually even older than that. But this is one of the very few distilleries that actually have a 17 in front of the date that they were made. Beaumore, um, Strath Isle, and um, Glen Turret. And then we have here our um, Bad Blair. Now, basically, we can thank Robert Cunning, um, 1948, right after World War II. He bought Bad Blair. Um, the distillery had been up for sale since 1941. Of course, the war happened in between there. Um, he paid 48,000 pounds for it. And he basically um, tripled capacity. He renewed everything. Thank you very much, um, Robert Cunning, for doing that. And then on along came in the year 1970, these Canadian guys, uh, Hiram Walker, and they bought the distillery. Hiram Walker uh, merged together um, with then um, Allied Vintners in the year 1988 and became Allied Distillers. Later on, they merged with Guinness, basically Metropolitan, and became Diageo. So what happens is, is that they, Allied Distillers, sell this distillery in the year 1996, one year before this was bottled, over to Inverhouse. Now, Inverhouse is actually Thai Beverages, so once again, a distillery in Scotland that is not owned by a Scottish company. Hmm. Very few are, by the way. They're French, they're British, they are um, American, they are Japanese, and they are Thai. That's kind of weird that so few of the distilleries are actually owned by Scottish companies. But hey, money makes the world go round. All right, I've given this some time to actually um, rest in the glass. Oh, I like. Oh, now, um, question of the day, what is your favorite Bob Blair? I do not think I've had even five Bob Blairs on this channel, on my German channel, let alone my English channel here. Uh, this is something that's totally outside of my radar. Um, I do remember when they changed from the vintage um, to the um, year, to the um, age bottlings, that many people tried them and they were um, disappointed and so on, all oh, the good old days and so on. And since then, there have been basically hardly any um, talk about this whiskey at all. 
um, very, very, very quiet. Um, Germany is one of the biggest markets for Bob Blair. America is not a big market. It wasn't. It's starting to become a bigger market. Um, they do not produce that much whiskey, to be honest. We're talking about 1.8 million liters. And I read somewhere that actually... Um, what was it? I think in the year 2014 in my malt book here, it said 21% goes into single malt and 79% goes into blends. What a shame. What a shame. Mm, such a good whiskey. All right. On the nose, I get white grapes. I get yellow plums. I get a very light moment of citrus. No, lem lemon meringue. Vanilla almonds very very light very nice very delicate whiskey here the 56.2 percent absolutely no problems whatsoever nice um marshmallow so what says here vanilla pod leads to seville orange zest and white chocolate black pepper gives way to green apple and honey a full finish with lingering spice Yep, you're right about that. I was in Seville in Spain once. Uh, my wife and I, we had a vacation there. We were in this pretty uh, nice hotel and they came up and said, hey, would you like a coffee? And it's like, sorry, don't drink coffee. Then I could recommend an orange juice. I was like, oh yeah, I love orange juice for breakfast. And the lady goes over, um, she starts cutting oranges, puts them in the machine. There's a conveyor belt that squeezes out these half oranges and she brings me a freshly poured, uh, freshly squeezed glass of orange juice. Fantastic. One of the best 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 glasses of orange juice of my life and there's a tiny little of a memory that peaks up when i think about this about those seville oranges if you ever uh, if you were ever in seville there's orange trees growing basically everywhere and these oranges will actually fall down from the trees onto the cars onto the pavement onto the sidewalk and then there's a certain time of the year a certain smell which is um almost intoxicatingly nice <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that city. Seville was a beautiful... Be I like Spain. I mean, if I were to choose between having to live in Germany, Italy, or Spain, I think I would choose Spain, to be honest. I think my wife would choose... I know she would choose Germany, but then um, we both like Italy as well. So, oh, very, very nice. All right, the Buna and I, we're not friends. There's a certain type of basement type of um of of a um, dampness in here a tiny tiny every once in a while there's a little salt moment it just kind of lights up in there and um it's not really my wheelhouse um i do think that's my personal opinion that kirsch picked four i'm sorry three um bottles that were very typical of that distillery the distillery character by Blair, perfectly captured. The distillery character of Glen Tauchars in a first fill sherry um, hogshead, beautifully captured. Um, Buna, basic, maybe I'm not, a, I don't like the distillery character of Buna Abin, at least not in this um, refilled hogshead. Um, just not just not what I'm looking for, not what I like. All right, so Wheelhouse does not automatically say that this is a bad whiskey. It's just not my thing. All right, all of these are priced way up there, 21, 22, 23-year-old whiskeys here. Not something that um, normal people just go buy on a whim. All right, so you could, you have to think about that. Don't forget, I have um, basically with these three whiskeys, 600 euros here on my table that I've just tasted, reviewed, and um, that I bought and I now will share with people. All right. Let's try this. As I said, 56.2%. It might be a little bit hot. Mm -hmm. mm. It's still a tiny little bit too much for me. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice finish. That lemon zest, that orange zest. Let's call it more of an orange zest is there. A tiny little bit of an almond. I'm going to put the word marshmallow in here a few times. Um, that sweetness is there. Very, very nice. This is a B whiskey. Um, not a B plus, not a B minus. A B whiskey. Very, very nice. I like. 
Um, you do notice, or I do notice, a little bit of an age going on here. Um, I would not have tagged it at 23 years old. I would have tagged it at maybe 16 to 18 years of age. Um, Non-chill filtered, no color added. Very, very nice. Sweet, fruity, honey, apple, milk, chocolate. I don't really get any pepper here. I, I got the heat of the alcohol. All right. Now, if you dilute it down, you take it down to 50%. No more. All right. So the 56% were just too much for me. 50% is just right. Hmm. 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 There is a viscosity. Not much, but there is. Fruity, citrusy, well done. Nothing wrong with this whiskey whatsoever. There's not a flaw here to be found, in my opinion. It's a quiet whiskey. It's a reserved whiskey. It's a whiskey that deserves time. It deserves a little bit of attention. It deserves more than I'm actually giving it. Mm, this is good. Now, as I said, solid beat. Value for money, C- minus once again. Why? Because I am not willing to pay more than 200 euros for a bottle of whiskey. I'm a cheapskate. Um, is it okay for the 23 euros and the 219 euros? Yeah, if you're looking exactly for that. But as I mentioned before in my other um, video about my car, I'm not buying C-class Mercedes. I'm not buying um, A7 Mercedes, um, Audis. I'm not buying fives or seven BMWs. These are just not my price class of living style. And this is not the price class of my whiskey style. But there is definitely a, a group of people, a target group, that will enjoy this whiskey very much so. Um, all we need to do is to find the 200 and um, some odd people to buy that bottle. 218, 208. Um, yeah, question of the day was and still remains, what is your favorite Bob Blair whiskey? I did not know a lot about the company. Now I'm even more intrigued and in trying to find new and other bottlings. And you might see something on the table here in the future. Who knows? Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for liking. Thank you very much for subscribing and telling others. Um, maybe even share this on social media and help people get the word out here about the Connoisseurs Collection Cast Strength from Gord McPhail. Very, very good things. They always come in this nice block box. Um, the good thing is, is the bottle is protected without actually hiding anything. You can see everything about the label. Let's turn this a little bit more. Um, here's the back label, here's the front label. It's very sturdy, it's protected, and yet everything is still visible. I like. Thank you very much, Gordon McPhail. All the best. See you soon. Whiskey Jason. Bye-bye.